Hey friends, Tim Whalen here once again from Whalen Jazz Lessons. Today, let's expand your vocabulary, shall we? I'm really excited to share three classic 251 lines in a major key, and they're all just using bebop language. I'm going to have a bunch of videos that focus on specific language, and today, this is bebop. These lines are packed with different concepts and ideas that if you work on them through all 12 keys, um, they will definitely elevate your playing. But that's not it. In addition to the licks themselves, if you stick around in a little bit, I'm gonna show you what I think is a really effective practice technique to not only help you learn these things quicker, but it's a way to integrate things into your own vocabulary and a way to expand things inside of your own style of playing. So what's the point of a video like this? Of course, it's to show you new vocabulary but it's also to show you how this vocabulary is implementing and using all sorts of different musical elements, arpeggios, rhythmic variations, enclosures, resolutions, um, bebop scales. So it's a way to kind of see all of it in action. As with everything, practice each of these in every key. I'm not gonna do it in every key in the video, but if you click the link below, I will have a PDF with all of these licks in all 12 keys, so you can have that as a resource. All right, let's get to it. Lick number one. We'll just do these starting in the key of C. This is some classic Barry Harris right here. That's so great. Now with anything, let's analyze what's happening here. The D minor, we've got a arpeggio of D minor triad. Now we've got a kind of an enclosure that takes us to the fifth of G, G7. There's a resolution to the third of G7. And then we've got this. So we got this. What that is, that's what we call pivoting. If I went. I arpeggiated a diminished seventh chord up, but what Barry does here is he pivots it. Rather than going, he takes the, the top note and pivots the rest of it down an octave. Pivoting is a very effective thing, and I'm gonna do a whole video about it. I've got a lot of videos I'm gonna do, but we'll get to it. Pivot, and then this is just a great little We've got arpeggio on the uh, third, and then an arpeggio on the root. How about uh, B flat? A flat. There it is. Let's do one more. Um, how about D? That's a great one. Number two, this is um, kind of a nice one because it's, there's not really any alterations happening. It's just working on half steps of these scales. So there's a little enclosure here. So here's, the, here's how it sounds in its entirety. We got here. It's a little enclosure around the root of D minor. This is a real common scale motion. One, two, three, four, five. Skip the six and go to the flat seven. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat seven. It makes it a one, two, three, four, five, a six note scale, which leads us to the third of G7. And then we're just playing a G7 bebop scale. Skip a note so we can resolve to the root. And then this is just a nice implementation of half step rules of a bebop scale. When you're on the seventh of a major bebop scale, you 
can do half steps all the way down to the fifth. And then this is just a nice ornamentation. Actually, if you check the video up above, this is one of the little um, 10 must know jazz licks that I show on a previous video. How about uh, G major? So rather than just learning your bebop scales, major, which you should do, what a great way, this is a great way to bring them to life. Let's do one more um, key of G flat. Okay, that's number two. Number three, this one has a little bit of an alteration on the five chord, but again, it's this one's nice because it's got some nice half step movement. And there's actually a quote at the end that I just realized from the tune Woody and You, but it's just a pretty classic uh, little phrase on a one chord. So here it is. So if we look at this, that's a real classic, like Bud Powell did that a lot. Essentially, well, something to keep in mind too, this is just an aside. A lot of times we have a two, five, one here. A lot of times I feel like people in that era were thinking just five to one. But we think of it as two, five, one, it's just a little more of a modern context. But if you look at this, we've got four flat sharp major third, flat three. It's this. So we got very cool. And then we've got a resolution to the third of G7. Very common movement. Three flat nine root flat seven. And then this little three five seven nine with an enclosure to the six. Okay, let's do this around the uh, key of F. Let's do a couple more. How about how about E? Let's do D flat. Okay, so how do we practice these? I'd say you can practice them in three ways. Um, the first way is the way I've been doing it. Play the whole phrase through every key. That way you can see it in its entirety and in transposing it, you'll see how these different keys feel under your fingers and in your brain and all sorts of stuff. The second way is maybe isolate each chord. Only play the, the material for the two chord. Only play the material for the five chord. And only play the material for the one chord. I'll take example number two. Um, here's the one chord. That's it. Isolate that. Right? Do the same thing for the five chord. Let me get that up here. Yeah, we got this. Let's do the two chord on example two. You get the idea. You could even break it up into smaller chunks. You know, let's say, let's do that five chord in example two. Maybe we just go. The beauty is you can do whatever you want. 
but just pay attention to what's resonating with you and, and what you what you need to work on. If you can't play it, you need to work on it, right? Pretty simple. The last way to really internalize stuff that I think is super helpful is something I call the runway method. It's where you take a, a chunk of your vocabulary, that's your runway, that's your resolution, your destination, and you want to resolve into it by a stepwise motion. So it's a smooth resolution into the vocabulary that you want to internalize, and then you resolve out of it. Or you, you end it on that resolution. So I'm gonna take, um, uh, that's number three, the one chord. And I'm going to use my own vocabulary on the two chord, the five chord, and then I'm gonna resolve into the one chord. I'll go kind of slow and go through it a few different ways so I can try to get a flow here. Let's see. <laughs> Let's try that again. That was good. See, I'm resolving into it with my own vocabulary. I'm not going like this. I'm, I'm trying to resolve into it. Let's do a couple more. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. So what's good too is you can latch on the little lines. kind of a cool line and I could use that as just a seed to practice in that little realm. Um, let me do one more. Uh, let's see. Uh... So you get the idea. You can do that with, with um, a lot of it. Let's try... Um, uh... That's the five chord from number two. Let's see if I can do this. Um... No. That was kind of nice. So you see, I'm trying to make my way to that five. Um, uh, let's see. What it does too is it forces you to figure out how to resolve. Resolution is so important and what this runaway method does is it, it, it makes you have to think about how can I resolve to known vocabulary in a very smooth way. So the runaway method is super beneficial. So there you have it. Some two five ones using bebop language in a major key. Click the link below to get the free PDF of these licks in every key. And uh, I hope it was beneficial. If you feel so inclined a thumbs up would be awesome, and uh, even subscribing would be so appreciated. And I'm really happy you checked it out. So have a good one. Happy practicing.